Oh, hello again. Welcome to New Hope. Well, <laughs> yeah, welcome to New Hope. That's a good one. Welcome to One Man's Faith. All right, that's what this show is. I'm glad you're here with me today. We're going to look at God's Word again, as we always do, and we're going to just get some stuff out of this because it's living, it's active. If it's living and active, then it's constantly with us. It's not just a, an old book like Shakespeare. It's a now book and a new book like ones that haven't even been written yet because every time we read it, we'll get something out of it. And speaking of that, are you reading? Are you, you know, this is a new year again. Are you reading? Are you getting into God's Word? I'm going, I want to encourage you, get into God's Word. If you have to, get a journal and, and write things out. Uh, most journals will have a... Um, uh, a list of uh, uh, things to read, you know, uh, you know, a daily devotional thing. We have it on our website, and we're, f um, we're more or less going straight through the Bible. It's not an Old Testament, New Testament reading. We're just going through Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, all the way through to Revelations next December. So I want to encourage you, get into God's Word. You can't know God unless you get into His Word. You've got to get into His Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So get into it. Get into it. There's a lot there for you, and it won't change. Well, I'm not say, the Word won't change, but what you get out of it will. You, you'll get something out of it this year that you didn't see last year. I'm seeing that myself. It's just amazing some of the things that, that you know, I wasn't, I wasn't at the point of seeing it last year. And it's the same, it'll be the same way with you. When you open God's Word up, say, God, open it up to me and let me see something new. And He will do that for you. He will do that for you. Amen? Um, one other thing before we start is... Uh, well, actually, two other things. The first is this. Movie night is coming, and that'll be February 3rd at 7 o'clock, and it's going to be When the Game Stands Tall. Great, a great movie. There's some great stuff in there. Bring a friend and come. It's free. Hey, it's better than paying 8 bucks or even Two fifty on Netflix, you know, or whatever. Come, bring somebody and come on out. When the game stands tall, February third at seven o'clock. You won't regret it. it it's going to be it's going to be a good movie. Um, one other thing, I, I told a friend of mine I would mention this for them. Um, Covenant Lighthouse, which is up on the west end of Blosser Ranch Road, is moving location. It in their first service in their new building will be February 8th, okay? And their new location is going to be at Wheeler Springs Plaza. So if you've thought about ever going there or going to Covenant Lighthouse, go. Go. It's, it, it's, it's in the center of town, uh, and, and you won't regret it. You won't regret it. There's some great people over there. Penny and Roscoe are some of our best friends, and, and, and we just love them to death. So if you, if you get a chance to um, go by there, February 8th, Covenant Lighthouse will be moving off of Blosser Ranch, and their first service will be February 8th. Uh, and their service starts at 945. Sunday school starts at 9, but the, their service starts at 945. Okay? All right. Let's take our Bibles and let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I want, I want to look, we're going to look at uh, a subject here that, that I don't know, I've, I don't think I've ever really talked about it myself because I've always assumed it was something else. And I'm being cryptic, aren't I? Let's go ahead and read the verse, and 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 then and then we can. I'll, I'll, we're going to introduce it today. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse thirteen. It says, "But having the same spirit of faith." That's the word we're going to look at. According to what is written, I believed. 
therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore we speak. The spirit of faith. Now, th that's, that's, a, that's kind of a different term. Normally we talk about faith, but now the spirit of faith? You see, as we, as, as we go through life, we walk in faith, but there's also kind of a, a spirit of faith that, that envelops you to where, to where it becomes a part of who you are. Just as the Spirit of God re re resides in you, the Holy Spirit, there's a spirit of faith that, that, that parallels through and, and the more you get into God's Word and know what, what He says to you, the more your life is based on faith and works in faith. And, and that's, what, that's what we're going to look at. We're going we're gonna to look at different aspects of the spirit of faith over the next, oh, five, six, seven weeks. Um, and we want to see what it's about. So let's start today and let's just look a little bit at how the spirit of faith works in our life. Uh, if we go back up to... Um, uh, let's see, we want to go back up to, let's say, verse 5 of this same chapter, chapter 4. Let's, let's read the context and come down into, into this term called the spirit of faith. He says, um, For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord, and ourselves as your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. He says, we don't preach ourselves, we preach, we preach Jesus. And there is a... Uh, there is, a, there is light that comes out of darkness. You see, you were darkness. I was darkness. And when I accepted Jesus as Lord, the light of the Lord started to shine through. It brings the knowledge of the glory of God. Jesus, uh, in, in John chapter 1, it says... Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And it goes down further and, and says that the light shines. Let me go back there. Let's put it in, in, in its correct context of John 1. As my pages stick together. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. This is John 1.1. 1, 1. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being by Him, and apart from Him nothing came into being that has come into being. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. All right? Jesus was the light, and He shone into our hearts. Do you see that? And later on He says, you are the light of the world. You see, he passed the baton off to us. He says, listen, I'm the light. I'm starting this thing. But now you are the light. You go. You go. So Paul is talking here. He says, God says, light shall shine out of darkness is the one who is shown in our hearts. John 1. He is shown in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. The Holy Spirit comes, Jesus said, will come into your life and He will teach you, He will show you, He will guide you in all things. The light will bring the knowledge of the glory of God. And He goes on in verse 7 and says, and, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that's, that the surpassing greatness of the power of God that the surpassing greatness of the power may be of God and not of ourselves. He said, listen, this light is coming in and it's a treasure and he's put it in earthen vessels, you and me. He's put the light in us. It's a treasure that the surpassing greatness of the power 
may be of God. Jesus said, listen, I don't even want you to leave Jerusalem, he told his disciples, until you have received the power. Let, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will receive the power. And that's the power that God is putting into these earthen vessels, you and I, so that we and people around us will know that this doesn't come from us. It's not our own self proclamation or whatever that I don't have any power. My power comes from God. Your power comes from God. And He's placed it, He's placed it within us. It's hidden in clay pots, earthen vessels. And listen, mine leaks. You know, I'm functionally fragile, just as you are. You are fun functionally fragile. We leak, we chip, we crack. And yet God has placed this power within us so that the world will see and know that, hey, it's not, it's not that clay pot, because that clay pot, if I drop it, will break. So the power comes from God working through us. Our only problem is this, is that we look at ourselves and we disqualify ourselves because we think we're weak or we know we're weak and are chipped in a crack and that we don't deserve to support this treasure. And brothers and sisters, that's the furthest thing from God's mind and what He wants to do. He purposely chose you and me. He purposely chose you and me to place this great power in, knowing, knowing that we are fragile. He knew it. But now we can show the world, hey, it's not me, it's not my weakness, it's the power of God. Amen? Amen. Okay, I got to take a break, so let's take a break, and I'll be right back. <laughs> 